Hi, folks. This is Dr. Rob Sivers, and uh, I am the carb addiction doc. But one of the things that we is integral to the way we practice, the way we manage our our patients metabolically, and we're a metabolic uh, health center, uh, which is a new specialty, and it's just a, a foundation right now. But it's be- in the next decade, metabolic health, metabolic medicine is going to be a specialty of its own. But one of the things that we do a lot of is blood work to analyze where people are and what's off, what's on, so that we can help them, not globally, not generally with little ideas like the internet tries to box you into, but really understand where you currently are and give you guidance as how you can move yourself forward. So the next series of, of videos are going to be about specific types of blood work that I use to analyze where somebody is. One of the big questions that we, and, and there's so much confusion and so much obsession about this, is how much protein should you eat? Protein, okay? And the first thing I'll tell you is that number one, very, very few people other than vegans or vegetarians in America ever, ever eat too little protein. It is very, very rare that we eat too little protein. The majority of us, I would tell you that pretty much every single person watching this video right now is in excess in terms of protein that your body needs relative to what you think it needs. Everybody, everybody watching this right now is eating too much protein. Let that sink in. Let that sink in, okay? Unless you're a vegan or a vegetarian, trolling trolling this video, you are probably excessive in your protein. But here's the issue, and I'm adamant about this. If anybody ever tells you how much protein you should eat, they know nothing about human biology. Because I can't tell you how much protein you need to eat. I cannot. Nobody. Cheryl, my brilliant dietitian, did a video on, or is going to do a video on this. But even she, in all her brilliance, in all her experience, cannot tell people how much, or she can tell them, but it's irrelevant. She does not tell people how much protein they need to eat because we don't know. And the way your body handles protein is under the influence of insulin in the liver, the body reconstructs amino acids, which are the breakdown products of protein, into new proteins for your body, hormones, enzymes, releases those, but there's a threshold. And any protein above that threshold has to be metabolized. And it gets metabolized into sugar, or into ketones, you've got some ketogenic amino acids and some glucogenic amino acids. So the liver breaks them down into either ketones or sugar and releases them into the bloodstream. And then if those that you don't use comes back to the liver and gets turned into fat. That's the way the liver metabolizes that. And that is done under the protein synthesis, done under the influence of insulin, human growth hormone T3, Uh, protein breakdown from your own body. So your body's, see, this is the variable. Your body is continuously autophagy breaking down and returning protein to the liver that has to be broken down. So all of those metrics are happening. You got the protein you're eating, you got the protein you're breaking down. All of that is your protein pool. Nobody can tell you what that is because nobody knows, but your body knows. And also your hormonal flux, glucagon, testosterone, uh, progesterone, estrogen, uh, human growth hormone, T3, uh, thyroid hormone, all of those things factor into how we use protein. And then there's the demand. Are you exercising? Are you sick? So all of these things factor in. Okay. But here's the way I can tell whether, I don't have a number, but whether you need to eat more protein, you're eating too little, and whether or not you need to modify your fat consumption on a ketogenic diet. And this is where the blood work comes in. I do not know what the number is. I do not know how much protein you should eat, but I can give you guidance to change percentages. And that can be pretty accurate. How do I know? Well, if you look, so if you understand this, the body will synthesize protein if you give it all the amino acids. So just one other little caveat here. Anybody drinking a human manufactured protein bar or protein shake or whey protein, you, that becomes sugar. Automatically that becomes is used for caloric value, for sugar and for amino acids, because in order to synthesize protein, you need all 21 proteins in the right ratio. And the only place you can get that is from animals and a little bit from plants, mostly from animal protein, because it's got everything in it. Anything manufactured, it's not what's in there. It's the ratio and also what's not in there. So the body can't use the the amino acids adequately. So if you're fooling yourself, if you're eating a, drinking a bunch of whey protein, it's just calories. Now, let's say you eat that ribeye steak, 
that ribeye steak in your belly gets broken down to the 21 amino acids. They get absorbed up the portal venous system into the liver and under the influence of insulin and to a certain extent glucagon, they get processed. Some of it gets made into other proteins, hormones, vitamin, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, enzymes, that kind of thing. Now, let's talk about the residual because this is where the blood work comes in. That protein that's left over can only be broken down. There is no store for excess protein in the human body. The body doesn't have a protein store like it's got fat cells. It doesn't have glycogen deposition for protein like it does for sugar. So there's no store for protein. It has to be converted to sugar or ketones, as we said. And when your body breaks the only macros, fat, glucose or carbohydrates, and protein. So if you look at those three elements, the core of those three elements is three molecules. All fat and all sugar is pure carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Those are the three molecules. So when you metabolize fat, when you metabolize protein, it is metabolized to water and carbon. Okay? H2O, hydrogen, oxygen, water. Okay? CHO. However, protein has an element in addition. All amino acids have something called nitrogen. And nitrogen, it's in the air, it's the, the, the largest uh, uh, um, molecule in the air, it's the largest atom in the air, nitrogen, 70% of the air. However, nitrogen is an obligatory waste product of the human body. And the human body has two main ways in which it eliminates nitrogen. Okay, So when you convert protein, your own protein or protein you've eaten, into energy... You break that, uh, 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 you can modify the proteins into different types, the amino acids, different types of amino acids. But ultimately, in the liver primarily, that protein is broken down. And the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen go toward down the energy pathway. They get used. Think about this. CHO becomes sugar or ketones. But the N has to be dealt with. And in humans, as opposed to reptiles and birds, the N primarily becomes ammonia, NH3, NH4, ammonia, and ammonium. And that then converts into something called urea. And we can measure in the bloodstream called blood urea nitrogen. You'll see it on the blood work, B-U-N. But it's really urea that is the soluble waste product of proteins gets peed out as nitrogen. And if we can calculate the amount of B-U-N and we have a range for BUN, we can tell you if you're breaking too much protein up down a sugar, towards sugar pathway, if you're eating too much and having forcing your body to metabolize it, or you're getting too little protein in. I'm going to go through that in a second. The other two forms of nitrogen waste, the other big form of nitrogen waste, which birds and reptiles use as their dominant thing. You smell guano, it's got a particular smell to it, bird poop. And that is because they produce primarily uric acid, urate. Now, humans produce a small amount of urate, which is actually a very powerful uh, um, antioxidant in the bloodstream, equivalent to vitamin C. But uric acid in excess levels can cause gout, it can crystallize out in the kidneys, and is the second commonest cause of kidney stones. But uric acid is a nitrogen waste product, typically for DNA, the purines, the pyrimidines, also for fructose, but also for protein. It's a protein waste product. Okay, so we've got uric acid, which is a nitrogen waste product. We've got uh, um, uh, BUN, and then the third one is creatine. Uh, creatine that gets released from the muscle cells, and we form creatinine. Creatinine is the waste product. So those three elements I look at in the blood work, and I can look at the BUN, the creatinine, and the uric acid to determine the uh, health or illness of your protein metabolic system. Now, a normal BUN for me is around 18 to 22 in most adults. Kids can sometimes have a higher one because they're growing continuously. Okay, So that BUN of 18 to 22 is important. If your BUN is significantly lower than that, one of two things may be happening. Either um, you're eating too little protein, you're eating too little protein. And the concern then is if you're under that number, 
if you are eating too little protein, let's say you're a vegan or a vegetarian, well, your body it still requires that degree of sugar from time to time. So it's mobilizing in excess your own protein, your own muscles to supplement that. Because that 18 to 20, 18 to 22 is an important range. So if you're not eating enough, you're going to be low, but your body's breaking down, auto, autophaging your own muscles, which you don't want for the most part. Okay. If you're very high, if you're above that 22, 23 threshold, now you're eating excessive amounts of protein or your protein fat ratio is excessive. And then you're breaking excess protein down into sugar and you're eliminating that as BUN and often the uric acid is high as well. So also, if you're breaking cells down, and this is the other marker of autophagy. So let's talk about both things. There's two additional things to talk about with a BUN that's too low. If your BUN is too low, it means you're under eating protein or you are so sugar dominant. You are so sugar dominant. You're in such high glycemic index that you don't need extra sugar from the protein. And therefore, you are under eating and under breaking down your own protein because you're so sugar dominant okay so the body doesn't need excess protein to break that down but if you're uh, uh if you're undergoing a lot of autophagy your bun may be low but your uric acid may be high because now you're raping and pillaging your own cells for protein okay which is what you don't want and then the excess uh, uh, protein is being spilled out as uric acid as well as the low BUN. Because those cells are breaking down, those cells are dying, and the protein is being used up from those dead cells. What's that releasing is DNA, uh, purines, pyrimidines, as well as the protein. On the high side, on the high side, it either means you're globally eating way too much protein or your protein fat ratio is off. So you may not be eating carbohydrates, but you, you have inadequate fat or you're hyperinsulinemic, insulin resistant, and you're shoving all your fat into your cells because that's what insulin does. But now you have an energy deficit and you don't have enough glucose because you're not eating sugar. And you're eating a lot of protein and getting protein from your own body. So one factor of a high protein is that you're insulin resistant. We can look at that. We can look at your insulin numbers as part of our blood work. But that elevated amino acid says you still, your body's still living off sugar. You're not eating sugar. It has to come from your protein. And even though you're eating a lot of protein, the protein is being pushed down the glucose pathway rather than down the protein synthesis pathway, pathway because you're insulin resistant. See how complex this is? Okay. Or... Your protein fat ratio is off. You're not eating enough fat. And there are certain people with, who are insulin sensitive or close to it that we increase the amount of fat up to 80% if they're not eating carbohydrates to reduce the dependency of their body on protein as a source of sugar because they're using their fat. So it's nuanced. It's nuanced. But when I look at a particular individual's blood work, I look at the BUN, I look at the creatinine, and I look at the uric acid. And the first thing I need to make sure about is that they don't have kidney disease. Now, this entire talk is based upon the fact that you have normal renal function. Obviously, people with chronic renal disease, the BU and the creatinine are going to go up. That's a measure of kidney damage. So I'm going to take that out of the equation for the purpose of this discussion, but it's the first thing I ask, do they have kidney damage? If their kidneys are normal, what are those ratios? And then how can I give them guidance? Lower your protein consumption. Eat more often, if you're eating a massive amount of protein once a day, maybe let's eat two or three meals a day, smaller amounts of protein, so more of it goes toward protein and less to sugar. Do we increase your fat consumption? Do we examine your sugar consumption? All of those things matter. But elevated uric acid is dangerous. BUN outside of the range is not necessarily dangerous, but it's indicative of a slightly broken system. And my creatinine level, ideally, I wanted 0.7 or lower. Above one, I'm worried about renal disease. I'm worried about kidney disease. Now, if you're an athlete taking creatine, we're going to take that into account. But those BUNs outside of 18 to 22, creatinine significantly above 0.7, and a uric acid above 0.5, above 5 or above 5.5, all of those numbers tell me the system is broken. Now, they treat high uric acid with allopurinol and with colchicine because of the risk of gout. That lowers the uric acid number, but it doesn't change the metabolism.
So you see how three simple blood tests with a few corroborating it, maybe some insulin numbers, maybe some lipid numbers as part of your blood work, gives me so much information. Now, I would urge you, I would urge you because of the complexity of this, it's fine to biohack. It's fine to look at those numbers yourself. But make sure somebody that understands what I've just talked about gives you guidance. Because if you're wrong, you're going to make it worse. That's what we do, folks. That's what we do. So I don't know how much protein you should eat. But I can tell you based on your numbers where you are with your protein, where you are with your protein fat ratio, where you are with your glucose, where you are with insulin sensitivity, where you are with tissue breakdown or tissue building and repair. That's metabolic medicine, folks. We are becoming a specialty. I consider myself to be a metabolic health specialist. If you need advice, if you need guidance, if you want your numbers read, give us a shout. Come and have a consultation. Text us, WhatsApp us, anywhere in the world. 561-517-0642. Obviously, we're pretty busy. Not obviously, but we are. Line up and we can get you in. Leave comments down below, but don't ask me medical questions. I'm not going to analyze your blood work in the comment section. Tell me your story, argue with me, but if you've had an aha moment, if you're a gum flapper on the internet and you didn't understand this, be careful of those people because you may not be where they are. Where, what they, where they tell you they are may be working for them, but you may be in a different place. We've got to figure out where you are and make adaptations or give you that backpack, you're perfect. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Hopefully this helps. Think about it. Leave comments.